the Hoka Stinson ATR6 versus the Hoka Speed Goat 4. Which one is better? Now, it depends obviously on who you are, what your foot is like, but I tried the Stinson out a while ago and I have some other videos on the side. I'd injured my foot and I wanted something with this high stack height here to protect my injured foot. I ended up hiking on them for quite a while. It was an interesting experiment. I, you know, I did like them. There were highs and lows. And I have other videos on that, which I will leave in the description. I'll put a link to in the description. You can check those out if you're considering the Stinson. But after wearing the Stinson, everyone who loves Hoka said, use the Speed Goat. And in this video, what I'm gonna do is, after using both of them quite a bit, I'm gonna tell you kind of what the difference is between the Stinson and the Speed Goat in case you're confused by all the different trail running slash hiking options that Hoka has. Now, if you go to Hoka's website, they have a shoe finder. They have a lot of different models, but they have a shoe finder where you answer some questions and it should drill you down onto the perfect shoe for you. Now, when I did that, it gave me the Speed Goat, but the Stinson was much better for me. And if you stick around, I'll tell you why and also give you some recommendations at the end on which one might be better for you. So first off is just a big overall. The Stinson is a much more cushioned uh, shoe and it feels like a really comfortable sneaker. Now, the Speed Goat is much more aggressive. It's thinner, it's not really padded on the upper or the tongue. Um, and it's a little more aggressive, even though it still has a very high stack height, it's not as high as the Stinson. Um, and overall, this feels like a more aggressive shoe, the Speed Goat. The Stinson is more like a comfortable sneaker. So let's dive into the specifics of it. I mentioned a second ago that the upper is more comfortable. The upper is padded on this. There's a padded tongue and a padded cuff around here. Overall, it just feels more cushy on my foot, and I never had any problems with rubbing or anything on the upper part of the foot. The Speed Goat, on the other hand, is very thin, very minimal. It's got a different type of upper, and if you look at the tongue, it's very thin. Now, what happened was that on the Speed Goat, this thin tongue, I don't know if it's just cut sharply or it's my foot, but it was cutting into my foot uh, quite a bit and wasn't really as cuff comfortable on the upper. So even though the bottom has a lot of padding, the upper for me was not as comfortable. Now they both have a pretty uh, high stack height. The Stinson is a little bit higher, a few millimeters higher than the Speed Goat. Uh, I don't know if it's a different uh, series of soles or midsoles in there, but the Stinson definitely felt more cushy than the Speed Goat felt in terms of the cushioning and the high stack height. Now the area where the Speed Goat blew the Stinson away was on the tread. The tread on the Speed Goat is the lugs are much more pronounced. It had a really good grip if I was going over um, granite without any dirt or anything, or if I was coming out of the water and then hiking. The grip on the Speed Goat was great overall. The grip on the Stinson was pretty horrible. Uh, it was very slippery, especially when walking on granite and especially when wet. So in terms of grip, the Speed Goat is definitely the winner. Now let's talk about the area where the Speed Goat kind of failed me and why I'm not using the Speed Goat, unfortunately. Now these are both size 11 and a half. Um, you can see right away that the Stinson is definitely wider than the Speed Goat. Now the Speed Goat comes in a regular and a wide. The Stinson, as far as I know, just comes in a regular. This is a regular, this is a regular. The Stinson was much wider, had a wide toe box, felt good on my foot. The Speed Goat was much narrower. And if you put them together, for the same size shoe, they should fit the same, especially from the same brand. And this, this was actually narrower than a lot of my very narrow Italian La Sportiva shoes, which are known for being narrow. This was so narrow that I got blisters for the first time in many, many years uh, on a 12 mile hike with the Speed Goats. So I don't know what the deal is if these are made in different factories by different designers, whatever, but if you're a shoe brand, you should at least make the sizing consistent across models. I get if they feel different, if they work differently, but the sizing should really be the same because in this day and age, a lot of people can't go into a store in this post COVID world or they order online because it's more convenient. Um, and the expectation is that it's gonna fit the same, and these definitely didn't. 
So maybe if I got a wide on the Speed Goat, it would have worked better. Um, but I'm not going to waste any more money on the Speed Goat because I just uh, I can't be buying $150 pairs of shoes all the time to test these out. So my recommendation would be this. If you're new to Hoka's and you want the ultimate kind of cushy foot feel, maybe you're going farther than you normally would be and you want something to support your foot, or you've hurt your foot and you want something to support it that way, I'd say the Stinson is probably your best bet, unless you're gonna do a lot of areas that are gonna be on like bare granite where it's gonna be slippery. The Stinson is definitely more comfortable uh, overall and you really get that high stack, cushy Hoka feeling. Now, if you have narrower feet or if you can go into a shoe store and try it on, you might want to go with the Speed Goat. I think the Speed Goat's probably a better like hiking slash trail running shoe overall. The tread is more aggressive. It's uh, better for most hiking conditions, which for a lot of us in the West uh, involve some granite or some walking over rocks. And I think this is a better hiking shoe. Uh, just make sure that it fits you. If this doesn't fit you, uh, it is not going to be a good time. And my message to Hoka is this, please size your shoes the same. And if you're gonna have a regular 11 and a half and a regular 11 and a half, make sure that the toe box and the different aspects of the shoe that are fit related uh, feel the same for a user. Because when you do something totally different, it really doesn't give us confidence in you. And if you wanna build another trail runner, I know you already have a million models of these, but if you wanna build another one, I'd say, do everything you did on the Stinson ATR6, make the upper a little bit more drainable and give it the same tread as the Speed Goat and that would be a winner. I would wear that uh, you know, in situations where I wanted something like this on my feet. And if you wanna know what I am wearing now, I have a full gear page that I keep up to date. Uh, I update it probably a few times a month at a minimum. Uh, and I'll put a link to that under the video too so you can see what my latest and greatest it is. Obviously things change all the time and maybe there's a newer shoe than these, in which case you can check out what I got going on now. All right guys, hope that was helpful. If you're on the fence between these two shoes, maybe now you have some information that you did not have before. If you find the video helpful, if you could give me a thumbs up, I appreciate it. And uh, any questions or any experiences that you might've had with either one of these shoes, just leave me a comment. I'd be interested to hear on uh, hear about what other people are experiencing with these Hoka's, or maybe there's another model that I haven't checked out yet that does exactly what I'm looking for, in which case, let me know and I will give them a try. All right, guys, I'll see you on the trails. Bye.